Washoe County Library System welcomes you to a wonderful history series that delves into fascinating Nevada topics with local experts. The Nevada Historical Society presents High Noon with Neil Cobb. Today we have another very special program, Home is Nevada, Animal Arc video episode number nine, where hosts Neil Cobb and Dick Stoddard get a behind the scenes tour at Animal Arc Wildlife Sanctuary. Our expert on this topic is Neil Cobb himself. My name is Terry, and I am so happy to be hosting today. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Sherry hayes -Zorn. Thank you, Terry. And um, we're so happy that everyone is here today. And we always want to thank the Washoe County Libraries of being such great supporters with us and helping us get these great programs out to everyone. So thank you as always. And uh, we have a great program. We, we, we wanted to um, bring it back a little bit. And with the holidays, wanted to uh, showcase a great video series that um, is kind of hidden and um, has never got to be seen on any of the local channels. And so I get to introduce our host as well as the, the program itself is with Neil Cobb, our honorary uh, curator. And we so appreciate Neil's support of the Historic Society, helping share Nevada history um, through since 1988 and getting the word out. So we, we greatly appreciate it. And, and it's always fun working with Neil every month. So without further ado, let me introduce Neil Cobb. Hey, Neil. <laughs> Hi, Sherilyn, how you doing? Thanks Good, for, how are you today? <laughs> for, for a wonderful intro on there. Let's see if I can live up to any of it. First of all, I wanted to talk a bit about Dick Stoddard. Dick Stoddard's family, uh, Bob Stoddard and his mom, uh, uh, Betty, uh, they're family friends. It goes all the way back to KATO uh, when Bob Stoddard was running that and a gal came on with uh, Coffee with Betty. Since the KPO uh, went to KBET and they changed things around. And of course, Dick himself, a weatherman, uh, probably 15 years with uh, Channel 2, and they retired out with 25 years uh, with Channel 8, KOLO. But Dick has run into some problems and he's come down with Parkinson's disease. He is currently uh, having some successful uh, treatments. I checked that out. But the family themselves, uh, Dick was an asset in many other ways. He put together a calendar in 1992, and it was to honor both uh, his parents and my dad as legendary broadcasters, all in the Broadcasters Hall of Fame of Nevada. And Dick himself is now a member of that same thing. But we had a lot of fun putting it together because each one of the dates, so we had somebody that was labeled, it's their birthday today. And we, he tracked down politicians, people on the street, even Ed the Waver, uh, his birthday was in there. Uh, police officers, uh, firemen, all kinds of people. It was just a fun calendar that he had put together. And all I did is furnish uh, historic photos to go with each one of the months. But Dick is doing as, as well as he can. He is a personality big time. I am a big fan of his. And I kind of followed him around like a puppy dog on most of these uh, segments that we had with uh, uh, Home is Nevada. So we had two different uh, sets of TV uh, DVDs up at uh, the Historical Society. Uh, they keep these things safe up there in the archives. One of them was a very successful program that we had put together with Hugh Roy Marshall as the guy uh, that paid for everything. And that was Old Tales of Nevada. I had set a goal for myself as uh, if this last 150 uh, episodes, uh, then it's time for new blood. 
lo and behold, uh, we made 150 and they were still rolling a couple of years after that. So I, I like to re, uh, you know, keep note in the people that made an impression with me and Hugh Roy Marshall uh, was definitely one of them. One of the things that he said to me one time, he said, you know, I'm a Texan. He says, and all Texans, you ask them, well, Texas, what's that like? And boy, you you better uh, hear a horn tooting and a half because all Texans are going to tell you all about it in no uncertain terms. He says, that's great. He says, but Nevada is every bit as important historically, color, weather, anything and everything that Texas has got. And what's wrong with the Nevadans? So he wanted to get involved with this to uh, bring out some of the color we have with some of the individuals and the places that they could go and, uh, you know, anything and everything to go ahead and promote with these these uh, different episodes of uh, old tales of Nevada uh, to promote the, the great state of Nevada. And I, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. Just before I hit my 150th episode, uh, John Allen, he was our cameraman, maybe a, a month, month and a half, uh, he decided to bail out. And but later on, after I'm gone, I get a call and, and I get this call from from John and he says, hey, I've got this guy. And he says that he's, he's wow. He says what what uh, Neil was able to do over there, just setting all those programs. stuff. Do you think he would work with us and, and, and maybe bring somebody else along so they could go ahead and play off of each other? And so uh, I checked him out, and he was kind of a different guy, that's for sure. But he was all gung-ho on this. So I, I approached Dick, and I says, hey, Dick, I got this going. And I says, well, if you'd like to go down there and check it out and tell me whether you'd like to work with me or not. And so he did, and he says, hey, this is, this is great. So we went ahead and we, I mean, we got out there and we went some places. We recorded nine episodes and the, the Saturday night at 7.30 on KOLO, it was the debut. Well, this guy that was such a hot shot putting it all together and do this, that, and the other thing, bounced to check to Colo and these things never hit the airways. So this is one way that I wanted to uh, take Dick's personality and save it like the his, uh, Historical Society and the library have gone together on this cooperative effort and be able to keep his personality alive. You can check out these programs at any time. So I wanted to give you a little background on it, and I just did so. I'm going to see if we can start this screen, get things going. Welcome to our program, Home is Nevada. And today, Neil, we are a little bit north of Reno, not too far out of town, to a place that I haven't been in a long time. Yeah. On 38 acres, we're going to look at lions and tigers and bears, the real yeah, thing. Yeah, the real thing. Huh? And what, what a magnificent facility as far as an educational basis. And that's really what they're all about. We're going to probably have some kids out here. You're going to hear some background noise down the line. <laughs> right. Well, well they, they work right in with the animals. Absolutely. You bet. Oh, yeah. So there's nothing more natural than a kid's fascination with the wild, wild so true. kingdom. Right. Yes. Our tour guide today is going to be Alex, and you're going to see the real thing, lions and tigers and bears. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Home is Nevada, and what we are showing you now are some cheetahs, and that's not exactly an animal that you see around Nevada, is it? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> I love it out there. What, is, what are the names of the ones we were looking at again? So out here we have Moyo and Jamar. They're <laughs> brothers, uh, born in South Africa, and they came to us specifically because of our exercise program. Really? How long have you had them out here? Uh, these guys have been here for about eight years now, oh, and have God. been part of our exercise program since they came. Uh, so we run them ex uh, regularly at high speeds, and so that is something that uh, 
Reno Whites can come see. <laughs> is it, come yeah. check out. Isn't uh, that the truth? Now, Neil was telling me that's the fastest land animal. Is that correct? That is. At that what is. speed? They can top out about 70 miles per hour. Oh. And hold that speed for about 20 seconds. So get, to give you an idea, our course can run anywhere from 200 to 600 yards. And they can cover that in 20 to 40 seconds. Oh, That's wow. It. Beautiful no cats. No. Not at all. It was great when he lured the cats up here. Yes. They're just giant kitties. <laughs> How did you do that? Actually, our lure is just a ball of caution tape. That's it's it. bright. It's noisy. Yeah. moves quickly. We can put it through a motor. And so it's just like your house cat. That's all it takes yeah. to get it interested. But then oh, yeah. once they've caught it, they're willing to let it go because it nah, nah, doesn't taste good. Sure. sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what I like is you give each animal a lot of room. The, the, these cages are not small by any means. Absolutely. We try to uh, include as much of the natural landscape as possible. Right. Give them plenty of space to be nice and comfortable and build very natural enclosures. That's also easy for the public to get to see them in. True, true. You know, this not being their natural habitat, how do they handle with uh, Nevada weather year-round? Actually, uh, especially our summer weather is almost exactly what they would face. Really? The, uh, yeah, but how about wild. the winters now? The winters, uh, unlike this past year, are normally really cold. Yes. Uh, so if you see the brown structures down there in the mm -hmm. back, those are actually heated barns for them. Really? Uh, most of the animals out here do perfectly fine because they're North American wildlife anyways. True. Uh, these guys being the exotics, we have to do something a little different for them. Now, what's exciting, coming up later in the program here, we're going to have some kids come by, right? Exactly. You encourage all the schools and all the clubs and organizations to come out and spend the day, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We what's love a phone trips. number people could call? 775-970-3111. Uh, and you're on social media. Yep. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, it's AnimalArc.Nevada. <laughs> okay. Or you can just go to our website, AnimalArc.org. And but, that has all the information on it. But there. the real fun is to actually come out yeah, here amen. and spend a day. <laughs> Just like anything else, to see it in the flesh Boy, is say. a whole different experience. Yeah. The names again of these two cheetahs? Moyo and Jamar. <laughs> now, do they know their names? Uh, they certainly respond to their keepers, yes. Do they really? So. That's good. And you've been here since what? Oh, I started in 07. Right. Yes. So Gosh, I, what a fun place to work. Yeah. I'd ask you earlier about it. how many people does it take to keep things going right. here? You well, have X amount of staff. We only have a few staff, about four full-time staff, uh, a few more that are part-time or seasonal base, and then everybody else is a volunteer. So we have anywhere from uh, 40 to 60 volunteers that help us out out here. I yes. bet they love and it. And then different work crews. Uh, sure. We recently had a crew from Starbucks come out. Um, Constant crews coming out from various churches and such to help us on special daytime projects, too. Now, I noticed a plaque on the wall over here talking about sponsors. What's that about? Uh, so we have various different sponsor, uh, sponsorship programs. Um, the most common ones are memberships, mm -hmm. which actually gets you in for a full year just off the one fee. Uh, or more uh, common is our, adopt, our adoption program, Share the Care. It's 100 bucks per animal. That helps us feed and care for that particular animal for a full year. Uh, your name goes on the sign, you get newsletters, a personalized picture saying you are a proud adoptive parent of oh. Moyo and Jamar. So there's a lot so. of animal lovers out there that can oh, participate yes. in yeah, this. Absolutely. Were, I didn't know that. There was quite a list over there uh, with the tiger that we looked at. Really? Earlier. Yes. In fact, uh, yeah. right here behind us, you can see the ones who have decided to help us out with Zulu or with Moyo and Jamar. Uh -huh. I, see, <laughs> I see some familiar names there. Well, so did I, Neil, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> What a great idea. And this is ongoing. Exactly. Yes. Totally. And we okay. also have a couple of events where only these people get to come in. So it's an exclusive uh, event for our sponsors to come in, bring treats for their animals, and uh, get to hear from the keepers about who uh, they're sponsoring. Back to the cheetah again. What is the uh, uh, lifespan, do you think, of that animal? Well, the cheetahs are uh, kind of interesting in that for a long period of time, they lived a shorter life in captivity than in the wild. Um, we got cheetahs here specifically so we could run them, and we're demonstrating that cheetahs live longer, healthier lives mm -hmm. when they get to exercise. When they get to exercise. Oh, it makes yeah. perfect it, it's sense, just, right? It's just like <laughs> us. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. So <laughs> Zulu here, she's actually 15 years old. She's way past her life expectancy and doing really well. Yeah, I mean, I, she's showing all the signs of age. You know, eyesight's starting to go, kind mm -hmm. of stiff joints, but uh, she's still going strong. Going All right. strong. Hey, Excellent. we got it. In the next segment, Neil, we still got coming up 
lions and tigers and bears. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs>
And once again, this is not a zoo. Correct. We are a wildlife sanctuary. Okay. Let's so. get that straight. Are we going to get to see the bears? We're heading that way. Let's do it. All right. Don't go away. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Home is Nevada. We are out here just a little north of Reno at a place called the Animal Ark. And we're looking at, what, 15 to 18 different animals and species that are out here. Alex, species. you are our guide. Yep. We <laughs> yeah. actually have 34 animals. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay. So. That's good. And what I like about this is the public is more than welcome to come on out and spend a day and take a look at what's out here. Absolutely. Uh, we have a lot for you to see. We do bear feedings every day, 1030 and 130. Mm -hmm. uh, we have picnic areas for you to bring a picnic lunch out and right. uh, enjoy the afternoon out here. Now, Neil and I have noticed driving around here uh, on these golf carts, there's a lot of uh, solar. What's the story with your electricity out here? Uh, we're completely off the grid. That is uh, great. So we have to produce it all out here. We have solar arrays everywhere. We have a couple uh, wind generators as well. So we're <laughs> able to exist without a... Power bill. En environmental free. Oh, yes. Right. Now, behind us here, I noticed a bird here that you were trying to feed earlier. This is a red-tailed hawk? It's a red-tailed hawk. His name is Zechariah. I went in to see if he was interested in coming to the glove. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, we're not a circus. We don't make them do anything. He <laughs> will get his food nonetheless. <laughs> well, you, you know uh, they're well taken care of when you can't get him to take a little more food. Good yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. Sure. But, oh, uh, that's a fat bird. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, here in probably another hour or so, he'll be a bit more apt. It's a little early right now, yeah. but he'll probably come to my glove. We'll go for a walk of the property. He actually travers, travels to schools over the winter, too. So uh, he will go in and fly for the school kids. Yeah. No way. Love it. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, in yeah. the auditorium? Yeah. Uh, or just even the little classroom. So I, <laughs> he, oh, that's he's good. great. Yeah, he really is. So. I notice you've got a plaque that says sponsored by an avian enthusiast. Yes. Multiple, multiple. <clears throat> so well, it's actually a club, you know, Reno Area, uh, Reno Area Avian Enthusiasts yes. Rave. It's a club here in town. They meet in Sun Valley, uh, but they helped uh, pull together funding for these bird muse. All of our, we don't get any government funds. All of our funding comes from uh, donations and people coming to the park. Now, Dick and I were so. looking at some beautifully inscribed and chiseled rocks, yes. big boulders, oh, yes. uh, people that, that are uh, able to really support in a bigger way than Dick and I can. Uh, <laughs> I noticed now Redfield there. And, uh -huh. and, and all. Really? Yes. And so uh, tell us a little bit about that. That was a pretty distinguished looking group of, of boulders, number one, and the names attached. Absolutely. So we talked earlier about uh, the um, sponsorship programs, the adoption program, where you mm -hmm. can sponsor one animal for a year. That's $100. Your name goes on their sign. And then we can, we have naming options all the way up to those rocks. All the way up to the and rocks. And each one of those rocks is about 20,000. So when you see just one name on there, they've supported us big time. And, and so like Nell J. Redfield Foundation, the uh, Hart Foundation, Dew Foundation, mm -hmm. uh, and some and, great and, uh, names out there as well, yeah. too. You know, Reno area is really loaded with philanthropists. <laughs> and we've been the recipient over there at the which we filmed at recently. Okay. Uh, Link Piazza went ahead and uh -huh. he, he paid for that building. We, uh -huh. we didn't. Uh -huh. So, But it's great to have people like that that'll part with large amounts of money to really make things happen. So, Absolutely. And they have got to be appreciated not just by you, but the rest of the community because they're... They're, they make work like this possible. They make, you know, that is taking you over over the line, yeah. and, and now you're in good shape. Absolutely. Or at least, but until tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so you always need help. And, and you would, oh, well, that's a natural. Food, 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 maintenance, yep, sure. the whole sure. work's yeah. on there. Yep. And, and, and you have to have some, some staff. You've got to have some cost on that to have the people that know what they're doing. And yep. while you teach the docents what, what's going on, and you have all the other help, uh, you can operate without them. But, Absolutely. But there is cost with uh, other ways. Absolutely. And, and I, I guess uh, it doesn't cost anything to build any of these uh, cages or that fencing Ooh. we see all the way around. <laughs> the, what? How far does that fence? It goes completely around this compound? We have a 10,000 volt electric fence that goes all the way around the 38 acres that we operate on. Mm -hmm. And then we have to have security fencing uh, all the way through the park yeah. to make sure people don't get too close. 
Um, we go through over a thousand pounds of raw meat every month. Oh. Uh, once the bears are getting ready for hibernation, our grocery bill, our produce bill goes up to about $400, $500 a week. Um, and then each of yeah. these enclosures can go anywhere from a couple thousand up to uh, $30,000 per enclosure for Yeah, an when you're having them heated, like for the exotic animals and all this. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is it costs to stay operational. Yeah, that so does. it's an ongoing concern uh, to support. Yes. Absolutely. Solar panels help. <laughs> oh, yes. No <laughs> power bill. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so were you able to get that as a donation in any of those? Because I've... Actually, Sierra, uh, before they became NV Energy, Sierra Pacific helped us out with those. Excellent. Uh, with I didn't that, know that main array sure. that you saw. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good. I know that the folks out there, Burning Man, have been very generous with what they've used, uh, yeah, reusing right. those solar panels in schools and so on, mm -hmm. too. So, I anytime we can uh, get the word out, we can still use some more help here. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Neil, I noticed coming out here, I thought it would take us longer to get here. Now, once you take 395 North and you pass Stead, what's the turnoff again? Red Rock Road. Road. It's exit number 78. Right. And most of that is paved. There's just a little bit of dirt yeah. road to get just here. Just a little bit of dirt. Yeah. It's only the last uh, half mile or right. so. Right. Right. So it's closer into town than I actually we thought. We almost missed the turn. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. We've only been around here, what, about 150 years between Something the like two that. of us? Something like that. I think so, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely worth finding, though. This is remarkable, and this is really a, an all-day adventure once you get out here. You should really spend some time. Oh, absolutely. And we have a ton of great events, too. Uh, so if you check out our website, uh, for example, on May 3rd mm -hmm. uh, this year, we have our Pinatas and Predators, where you get to walk around and watch each animal at a scheduled time, get a cardboard box or a pinata full of their favorite goodies, and they shred into it, and it's a ton <laughs> of fun to see. And so, you know, before I forget again, I want to talk once more time about the, uh, the tether bear. The tetherballed bear. Yeah, yes. this is. People have got to see this video. You mentioned it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Just search for tetherballed bear. You'll find it real quick. And it went, when but it did go on, the story about it very quickly is somebody just randomly took the video and put it on there. Yeah, we try to stimulate the animals all the time, and uh, it went viral. LG tends to love to play tetherball. <laughs> A guest filmed it, popped it on YouTube, and it went viral. Isn't that spectacular? It's a lot That's of fun good. to watch what he does too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So if you can't come out here and see him do it, you can see it on YouTube. Sure. All right, very good. Okay, we're going to be back with more. Don't go away. Well, Neil, before we leave our show today, we want to show everybody Mr. Peabody there. Can you believe that's a desert uh, tortoise, right? Yes. Uh, that is. And you know what significance that has? What's that? Well, it happens to be the state what? Turtle? Yeah. State what? Animal. Reptile. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was close. Yeah, you very <laughs> close. So that was our bit of trivia that we like to That's throw in good. periodically. Yes, and he's walking oh, yes. around the state flower, too. There's a lot of state flower out yes, here. Yes, there is. And in fact, the entire state of Nevada has a lot of it. And, of course, that being sagebrush. Look at that little guy go. Neil, I was noticing over there on the sign talking about Mr. Peabody. And Alex, is this true? He won't come out if the temperature's below 55 degrees because it's too cold? That's right. We're at kind of a high elevation. They're normally down in the Mojave Desert where it stays a lot oh, warmer. Oh, okay. So when we're here in Reno getting really cold, he actually goes inside our kitchen next to the uh, fireplace and stays warm. Well, I, if I remember correctly, last December... It was like a minus two in Reno. Where does yeah. he go when it gets that cold? Well, actually, by the yeah. time we get into December, he's in hibernation. Oh, and so he's in a you. back room, uh, <laughs> sleeping away. Smart. <laughs> they had a big push to adopt the desert turtles while they were trying to, uh, you know, take them off of their natural habitat. Really? Uh, so uh -huh. lots of people got into that and didn't, didn't know quite what to do. And this is another reason that maybe you've got one out here. That's right. Uh, it's believed he was a pet who was found uh, <laughs> out and about wandering around Reno where they're not normally found. No. <laughs> Boy, I'll say, what's the life expectancy? Uh, you could see potentially up to 100 years. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty wide a range, anywhere from 50 years. to 100. He's at least 57. That's what I was going to ask. 57. He looks pretty good for 57. Yep. We well, don't know his exact looks birthday. Looks better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, I, That's the first one that I've seen. Huh? You, you can't go out in Nevada anywhere, can you, and just find a desert tortoise? Not easily. No, no. Very rare. Isn't that amazing? Well, this has been a lot of fun, Neil. This was a good idea. Glad y'all could make huh? it. Yeah. yeah we're and, gonna of course, we had an expert that showed us around, really threw out the welcome mat, and we appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. And that's, once again, clubs, organizations, even the general public, cordially invited to come out here. They can call you at a phone number of 775 
970-3111. And you invite people to come on out and spend oh, the yes. day. Yeah. Oh, yes. There's a lot to see out here. This is really great. And you've been doing this for over 30 years out here. That's right. Yep. That's super. All right. Thank you so much for watching our show this week. Hey, Neil. Hi, Sharon. <laughs> that, that was fun. When we first started off, Dick got on me pretty good because I was just tailing along. And he says, Neil, we're supposed to be a team. You're supposed to talk. And now and when we got to episode nine, I didn't realize I talked actually uh, a lot. <laughs> so if we got any questions, we'd like to. Uh, have a couple before we get to Sherry. Okay. Um, oh, well, um, Neil, we have a question. What do we know about the current status of Mr. Peabody or any of the other featured animals? And Neil, can you also remind us what year um, this video was done? Uh, it was done in 2015, and there's been multiple changes out there. And to really come up, bring yourself up to date and be accurate, you really need to talk to the people that are running the animal art now. So now they're uh, 42 years old. <laughs> I, uh, I talked to my friend, uh, Tom Cates, and I asked him, I said, do you know uh, who in the world founded that? Whose property was it? And I found out that it was Aaron and Diane Hibbo. And they are now living in Belmont, Nevada. Well, Tom started with them. He was a school teacher here, here and he, he and his wife, uh, Phyllis Cates. Uh, and uh, he, he wound up with another little job. He was the outdoor education coordinator for the, the school district. And so he was able to get the buses and stuff right when they started in, in uh, 1981 and be able to take the kids out. And they just had a wonderful time. And I think it helped promote a whole lot of the donations because the kids really talked to the parents and some of the parents owned uh, businesses and so on. And so this is a, really a community effort. Absolutely. And, and, from when I was looking on their website too, um, they, the original owners now have um, have retired, so to speak, and and now it's part of it's controlled by their their foundation board. Yeah. Um, so, so it's I, I know that a few of the animals, of course, have since passed on, but you can actually look at on their website um, to to see who their latest animals are, and and I just saw. Um, from the Washoe County Library's comment was that Mr. Peabody is still there. So, so yeah, it's 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 an amazing um, place. I know um, I've took my son at least two or three times, and uh, and we went one one time on a field trip, and and it's just lovely. You know, they've really have done an amazing job to um, engage students of all ages to be able to appreciate uh, wildlife and and the taking care of them and and um, I, I was very impressed with everything including you know um, the bear yeah. <laughs> which I thought was pretty cute um, and you know it just I, I'm, I'm from Montana and so you know we used to hunt and be out in the woods so you know I've always been wary of bears but I, I got a love and appreciation being able to see um, how how well they take care of them and you know and they even set up food and uh, a viewing area so people could could see see the bears and and uh, eat and it, it's it's a really uh, a neat place their gift shop is different from most any other gift shop because they focus on stuffed animals that you know that are represented there in the facility and they just they do a wonderful job i just uh i, I can't thank them enough for doing what they do and mm -hmm. the people that go out there are darn well pleased that they did 
Absolutely. And, and the fact I really liked their program um, that you can adopt animals or help with their enclosures and, mm -hmm. um, you know, get that support because um, and you can go there's, out there there's a lot of people up, up in if you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that you could actually volunteer yeah, yeah. or financially and, and like they said that, you know, even have special events for so some of their, their um, donors that have helped support and um, fund for the animals. So it's, it's a great cause. And it just totally when you drive out there, um, out to Red Rock, um, it's, it's just beautiful. And it's just like, oh, you don't even think you're in, you know, you're not in Reno anymore. And it's just, it's a beautiful setting, even after the fire and um, how the landscape regrew. It's, um, they did a really good job being able to use the, um, the, the landscape to have their own enclosures. And, and I really liked the little bobcat and the Arctic fox um, was, well, is, was quite cute there as well. Have wolves out there. Uh, they did at the time. They did. They had some wolves um, and some foxes, but uh, it was surprising um, at the time was the Arctic fox. I was like, what? <laughs> um, but, you know, that was the same thing. It was somebody who took on this animal um, to adopt it and and uh, it was hard. You know, they, they couldn't take care of them. And, and you really do need to know what you're doing and, and they're trained professionals. Um, and there is another question here, Neil. Is it possible for the public to view other episodes from this series? Yeah, we do I... have them available. Um, we have them um, in our archives. And um, Sarah, who is our archivist, um, oversees that collection. We do have a media room that is um, being used for a few other things at the moment, but um, I don't see... Um, how we we should be able to provide access to the videos i know um everything i believe i like this this latest video that um that we just showed you um got migrated um but everything else is on a uh, dvd um but that's neil and i actually were talking uh before the the program began that it would be good to um get to that next thing to um to migrate them up so they'll be easier to view but yes you would be able to view them um in our research library. And so if you visit our website, you can schedule a time and um, reserve a seat at, in the research library. And um, Sarah and Teresa, who uh, manage the, um, the room, they would be able to get everything set up for you. So absolutely. And like Neil mentioned, you know, we do have um, our Tales of Nevada series as well as all not nine episodes of this home is Nevada. And we have talked that we'd like to um, sprinkle them in every now and then as well to, to be able to share some of these great stories. And I think, Neil, I mean, a few years ago um, when we were still doing it, um, our programs for High Noon in person, didn't we do one of the episodes with um, the artist from Dayton? Yeah, Steve Saylor. Taylor, thank you. I'm like that was a <laughs> wonderful one, yeah, because yeah. we were out there in his house. It's the oldest house in Dayton, and yeah, it's a pretty studio neat place. Was a, was a burned out uh, railroad car that he converted. Okay. This guy is one first class artist. He is wonderful. He did the the celebration of the sesquicentennial uh, with that giant uh, a, a painting. With all oh, with of the, the governors. governors, governors and the first ladies, and it looks mm -hmm. like a photograph, it, and it's it not; does. it's all hand painted. No, he's yeah. he, absolutely wonderful. And we were at the Keck Museum. Another one that was real interesting to me was when we went up uh, to the university and went over through the um, the Basque uh, uh, section. Oh. Yeah, and they have a whole bunch of things up there on display. Mm -hmm. And all of the research and the rest of it, and, and of course uh, uh, the uh, Basque monument that's over uh, above Rancho San Rafael up on the yep. mountain there. So, but there's some there's some real good ones in there. And I like the Bartley Ranch too, because the precipit uh, the people that really uh, made uh, they they got permission when they folded down this one ranch, and they physically took all of those outbuildings. You know the the uh, 
the blacksmith shop and all of that. I think there's seven or eight of them. And they built the boardwalk that's in front of it and a, a whole bunch of other things. But it, when when they take you around to show you what is there, they open the doors and they have more artifacts in there that match what the building was used for. And yeah, that it's a great place. Jack Hirsch and Jack Sutton and Lauren John, they physically did that. And they had to fight with the county to do it. They didn't want to be liability insured, da, 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 all of this stuff. And now they brag about it because people are asking them, is there any possible way we can do uh, have our wedding there in front and do this and that and the other thing? And, and it's the same way with that um, with the schoolhouse, the Glendale schoolhouse. Yeah. Absolutely. And um, we do have a question. Somebody was asking about the Keck Museum accessible to the public. And yes, it is. Um, uh, Garrett Barmore is the director and curator that oversees the um, Keck Museum. Um, but he also um, teaches part time as faculty. So you would want to look on on the website and uh, check out what they're, you know, I'm sure maybe they're going to have winter hours um, because it's part of the campus. And, and I do believe um, Garrett also gets um he has a couple part-time staff and maybe some you know, student interns. So you would have to check that out. But yes, absolutely. It's a great place. And so we're from 1904. Their place uh, was built in 1908. So they have some great historic cases, but um, cool um, displays yeah. and amazing, some amazing panoramics as well that um, really uh, are um, great to be able to learn more about the mineral history. And so it's a great setting. Yeah, I made a little mistake there. It's not the Glendale School. It's the Huffaker School, the original one. Uh, oh, the Huffaker. Yeah. yeah, the Glendale's down in Sparks. And of course, yeah. that's been beautifully restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people can visit that um, with the Sparks Museum, too. So Yes. Well, so, this was a great program, Neil. Um, did well, you I'm, want? I'm gonna I'm gonna butt out of here and let you talk about the place where okay. all of these things have been taken care of like they should be. I yeah. did not talk higher about uh, the historical society, the staff that we've got. They're rebuilding on the staff. Uh, Catherine mm -hmm. McGee, the new director. And of course, my favorite, favorite, favorite person is Sherilyn Zorn. I'm signing <laughs> off, kiddo. Take care. <laughs> okay. All right. So everybody, give me a second here. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm just going to be a few minutes just chatting about um, our upcoming 120th birthday and being Nevada's oldest museum here in the state. So let me click on that for share. All right, yay. So this is just a quick little PowerPoint presentation just with a few slides, but um, I really wanted to be able to share with you because um, we knew Neil's program wasn't gonna be a full hour, but we wanted to kind of give everybody a little bit of a heads up that um, in January, um, we will be celebrating our 120th birthday uh, along with uh, the, the Washoe County Libraries uh, at the same time. So um, we uh, did a joint um, birthday celebration back in 2004 uh, for the museum and the libraries. Um, and so that's actually, I put a few pictures in there as well. But um, I've been working on programming for the Historic Society since taking over as a curator of history, and I've done it through the decades, but um, really been working on trying to schedule some great programs um, and different events that will be coming up. So let me go to the next screen here. Um, so most people know about the creation of the Historic Society, but our founder um, was uh, Jean Weir, or Jeannie, and uh, she, uh, was became and was the curator of history and then the and then the um the only history professor on the campus for many many decades at UNR but she realized at in 1904 that uh the history was actually um disappearing at that point it was 50 years of statehood and realized that 
her history was, you know, moving out of state or communities or mining communities, you know, or, or but boom and bust and just the history was disappearing. Um, and so she wanted to uh, try to help preserve our state's heritage. So she um, talked to the Academy of Sciences at the university and encouraged people that um, the state needed to create a museum. And um, she um, got the everyone to agree, and she became the secretary, executive secretary, um, or what we would call today as the director, and she became our first director. So um, the Historic Society, um, like I said, was created in 1904, but it was until 1907 that we actually um, became part of the state um, with a, a bill that was pushed through by then um, Governor John Sparks. And uh, Sparks was definitely a supporter of the Historic Society and um, he is even the design, he is along with the uh, adjunct general, um, created the first state flag and we have that in our collection today. And um, from there, uh, so during this time, um, Jeannie Weir is uh, actively collecting materials and she is, um, you know, sending out letters and in between, you know, uh, semesters or, you know, quarters at the time, she's actually um, starting to do traveling. And, but, you know, we don't have a building at this time. And so she is collecting materials and keeping him at her home. Let me go to next. So our mission really has never changed through um, our 120 years. Um, the idea is that, you know, we collect and preserve the state's cultural heritage. So um, we, we, we've always wanted to provide it through education, research, and exhibitions about people, places, things, and events. So um, we're... It, for, we're really well known, of course, for our research library and having such a great archives, um, but also our artifacts as well. And the Historic Society helped create many museums through the decades um, when they were first starting. Um, there was definitely a big move and boom in the 50s into the 60s where several of the counties started um, getting these museums and um, came to the Historic Society asking if we could lend them materials to help uh, get them started. Um, our, our mission and vision um, recently was updated this year as we realized that we, we wanted to just make sure um, we were representing what our vision was, being inclusive and you know, uh, we represent the state. Um, a lot of times people kind of uh, either think of us as a museum or a research library. And the fact that, you know, we are also the re the oldest Reno museum too. Uh, it's, you know, people kind of forget that, but we, we, that's our mission is try to preserve the whole state's history. So, um, you know, at that point, we're a state agency in 1907, but it's not till 1911 that we actually are able to get funds. Um, and so at the time, it was Governor Tasker Audie, who then um, from governor moves on to senator. Um, and we actually have his uh, his papers here at the Historic Society. He uh, signs a bill to create our first building in 1911. And so uh, we even have the historic pin. It's a it's a nail, you know, um, that they converted into a pin to be able to sign the bill. And, and we have that in our permanent collection. So what I have, let me do that in size a little bit. There you go. Um, so um, just in case you're not aware, we've we've been into three different locations through our, our time here in Reno. Um, with the creation of our first location, it was in what would you would call the university district and the gateway on Center Street, North Center Street. And um, the, the building at the top um, is our first little building in 1911, and it was $5,000 to build. And when ultimately uh, we were moved into the state building that was built in 1926, um, 
the university kept our historic building and uh, became part of like a student uh, union and uh, our one of our uh, secretaries and um, she remembered talk, you know, actually being in the at building at the time for when she was going to college in the 1950s. So um, they used it until I think early 60s when they tore it down and built little apartments. And of course, now um, those homes and, and, and different things have all been torn down for um, the new buildings that are happening um, on the campus. But the second photo is our state building that um, was a combination of the Washoe County Libraries, uh, ultimately essentially like the DMV, and several other um, city and county um, offices were in the main building and the historic society was in the basement. And so we have a lot of people that still say, I remember when you were down there. And so that's where pounding, um, you know, um, the Pioneer Center, um, you know, right next to Pounding Park, um, that uh, was our location. And uh, we were there from 1926 until um, 1966 when the city um, decided to uh, tear down the building um, for the creation of the Pioneer Center. Our research library, uh, we actually moved to uh, St. Uh, was it St. Andrews, uh, one of the local uh, churches uh, in their basement. And so we were able to still provide research library research for people um, from 66 till 68 when our third location where we're at presently on the north end of the campus. And uh, our building along with the Flesham Planetarium and what is the computer building that's in our parking lot area was all designed by the same architect. And um, so they're, they're, they're interesting um, mid-century uh, buildings that um, are very unique. And at the time it was the idea that it was kind of like DRI would, was located there at one point and that, you know, like cultural hub was at the north end of the campus. And we are, um, we've been here since that, like I said, 1968, but we're, um, part of a 99 year lease with the university. So I know our director, um, Dr. Catherine McGee, has definitely been interested at some point, you know, can we expand, get an additional building to be able to provide, you know, um, expand our galleries and, you know, potentially gaming history. So, I mean, uh, the, there's definitely plans, you know, to see if we can expand for collection storage as well. But those are our three, the history of our three buildings. And I wanted just to uh, quickly show you uh, that, you know, we've been involved in many things uh, through the years, but I just thought it would just be kind of fun. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we are heading on our 120th birthday, but I've been here long enough now, as you can see in the picture at the top. Um, this is back in 2004. We did our uh, our centennial, our 100 year birthday celebration. And we had some different activities through the year, but what was fun, and I actually got to help with um, scheduling and uh, working with the libraries, is that we did a street fair in September. And so uh, we had music, we had Mark Twain um, uh, give a talk. Uh, kids activities. We even brought our famous two-headed calf for people to get their pictures taken. Uh, it was just kind of a, a fun way just to um, showcase uh, our, 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 our joint uh, birthday celebration. And just, you know, we, we did a lot of uh, history talks uh, during that year. And, um, and, um, and I just, I just thought I would share a few things just to show you um, the different things that we've done and, and continue to do. Um, our next um, big celebration was uh, the sesquicentennial back in 2014. Um, this is, you can see, we're, we're still working on it, but our changing gallery hallway, um, we did a 150th birthday um, where we were able to really pull out a lot of great pieces that... You know, as you as you know, or maybe you don't, we you know have small galleries, and so this is an opportunity that we were able to pull out some really um, unique and one of a kind treasures, like Emma Nevada's cape and her shoes that are in the foreground 
on the right side. Then the next piece on the right, you'll see a red jacket. And we still have that on display. And um, our education curator and myself have been talking. We'd like to be able to um, expand that. But that's uh, with the wheelmen. And so, you know, they were the bicyclists, but they also had a, a, a football team uh, and also a band. And so that's the band uniform, um, our Red Cross uh, quilt. So we were just able to pull out a lot of fun things. So it was um, a great celebration. Um, but we also did um, some other fun things um, during the sesquicentennial. Um, one of our former uh, colleagues, uh, Heidi Unglin, who uh, she, uh, Michael one day, who had been our former librarian, commented that um, the in 1964, the Nevada actually did a, a birthday cake that you see in the upper upper here, upper left, and all, and you can see that all the counties um, for the centennial celebration, it, it really was a statewide celebration and all of the counties had their own committees to put on programs throughout the year. And that's why there's big books talking about the centennial celebration parades and people dressing up in honor of our hundred year celebration. Um, but uh, Heidi uh, decided that was something she wanted to tackle and see if she could actually build uh, a, a large Nevada shaped cake to honor our, um, our sesquicentennial and they did it. And, and her husband is um, a cook and he worked at um, the Tahoe hospital that's in, in um, Carson city. So we were able to use our event space. We had Mark Twain, the governor, um, the first lady was able to cut the cake and it turned out to be a great celebration. And, and, um, and it, it was really a neat piece and, and she did a really great job. And so just fun little things. Um, but I just, like I said, I, I didn't want to take very much of your time, but I just wanted to say that I hope you'll um, stay tuned for some of our great programs that we're going to be doing. Um, we are going to be also getting uh, some building work redone with some capital improvement projects. So um, I'm finding out scheduling so it will impact my exhibition and at the end of 2024 but um uh Exhibits for this coming year is uh, our Hello Hollywood Hello exhibit will be up through the end of January. Then Vicki Kerwin and her beautiful watercolors will be our next show. And then um, Zoe Bray, who um, is uh, an amazing artist as well. Um, she has a wonderful exhibit. So we're going to showcase Basque portraiture, but also she's uh, created a bilingual Basque and English um, children's book that um, she has the original illustrations and so we'll have those on display as well. But um, we are working on our Nevada Day birthday party that will be on May 4th and that will be a Saturday. It'll be a free event and, and we are planning a and I've been starting to talk with the city and with the mayor to get a proclamation and try to see if we can get donations for a birthday cake. And we're going to have our amazing educational docents helping give um, tours and answer our questions. And we'll be working on the galleries to um, freshen them up and continuing to add um, updated labeling. Um, but also, uh, I'm very excited that Dr. Um, Sue Kim Chung, who is um, a head of uh, UNLV Special Collections, she wrote her um, PhD uh, dissertation on the Historic Society by going through our records about Jeannie Weir and the Nevada Historic Society. And so she's going to give a wonderful talk on that and, and is kind of making plans that she might actually write, turn it into a book. So we're looking forward to that. But also we're going to have some great outdoor activities um, and from like the ne Nevada Bureau of Mining and Geology, minerals and maybe some gold panning, um, the Civil War reenactors, blacksmiths, um, mountain men reenactors for like a rendezvous. So it, there's a lot of lot of things in the works. I'm close to having our writers Wednesday lecture series all scheduled, so we have some great. Um, speakers for that, along with our um, Nevada history lectures 
and getting close to having almost the full year scheduled. So I'll be um, sending that out in January, um, as well as a really great um, Lake Tahoe uh, series, including a panel um, with the um, Zeb Hogan, who and um, that wrote on Monster Fish, his book, and several colleagues. So it's going to be a great program, as well as um, with, uh, I'm looking forward to being able to showcase two films as well. The one um, that that tells the story of Black Springs um, and PBS, it will be showing that film uh, for Black History Month in February. So we're hoping maybe like April, we'll be able to schedule that. Um, and then um, Gaines, uh, Joe Gaines versus Nelson, the historic boxing match um, in Tonopah in 1906, a friend of mine and colleague, uh, Ted Fay, who um, he is a filmmaker, and he um, did, a, did a series and now is working on expanding it. So I'm hoping to get him here, yeah, maybe in August to um, have him show that, but then also give a great talk. He is considered an expert on Death Valley and also knows about um, a, the great story about our original 20 mule team that is in the gallery. So we've got a lot like, of uh, great things planned. And so I want just to give you a heads up that we're excited for a lot of great opportunities. So I come I hope you will come and celebrate with NHS in 2024. But that's it. So we just wanted just to um, have Neil here give us great program, um, but then just give a little bit of information about the Historic Society. Um, just want to say thank you, everybody, and uh, happy holidays. I hope you're able to spend time with friends, families, and loved ones. And Thank you for the Historic Society, Neil Cobb, and the Washoe County Libraries, and we'll see you next month. Bye.